Hello, my name is David Malin, and I'm the instructor for Computer Science E1, Understanding Computers and the Internet at Harvard University's Extension School. You're watching one of our videos of the week. For more such videos or information about this course, visit us on the web at computerscience1.org. Enjoy the show. Hello, I'm Dan Armendaris, a TF for Computer Science E1. You're watching one of our videos of the week. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about wiping a disk. So do you know what happens to a file when you delete it off of your computer? It doesn't actually get deleted in many cases. Let me explain. Right here I have a diagram representing a, a basic hard drive. So in the middle here, there exists what's called a file allocation table. This table has lists of all of your files on the hard drive and the locations of where these files, the data that, that make up these files, reside on the hard drive itself. So, for example, here in number three, you can see that I have test.txt. So that means that the data from test.txt exists in the sector number three, right here. Uh, so I also have a song called song.mp3, and that exists over multiple sectors because sectors have only a fixed size, and so files that are larger than that must take up multiple sectors. So song.mp3 takes up sectors 4 and sectors 5. So when you delete a file, what happens is that it doesn't actually erase the data of the file itself out of the sectors. All it does is the computer goes through and erases the reference to that data in the file allocation table. What I've done now is erase test.txt. The computer marks this as now being empty and doesn't touch the data in the sector at all. So the data that's still in sector 3 still contains test.txt. Now there are various ways that we can actually get rid of the data that exists in these sectors. If you're working on important documents, maybe your tax documents for example, you may want to actually get rid of all of the data in this. And there, there exist various applications for Windows, Mac, and even Linux that can help you complete this task. I actually have in front of me here a Macintosh computer and I will demonstrate what happens. So, let's say that I delete this file called temp. So it's thrown into the trash. Now, normally what I will do is go to the finder menu and click empty trash. It brings up a dialog box asking me if I'm sure I want to do this, so I click OK. Now you'll notice that it actually was removed quite quickly. This is because it's only removing the reference. This, this doesn't take a computer very long to do. So now let's remove this other file, temp.2. So I put it in the trash, and I go up to the file menu, or I'm sorry, the finder menu, and click secure empty trash. Now, the secure empty trash option is an option that exists in the Mac OS. What this does is not only does it erase the reference in the file allocation table, but it actually overwrites the sector the sectors that contain the data with junk information. Not once, not twice, not five times, not ten times, but 35 times. So it's just going to write random ones and zeros over this sector one time, two times, three times, and so on, 35 total times. This ensures that the data is actually gone off of your hard disk. So going back to the screen here, it's asking me if I'm sure that I want to do this. By doing a secure empty trash, I'm actually going to completely lose the files, so there's no going back. When I click OK, we'll see that it actually takes a little while longer in order for the computer to fully erase this particular file. It's still going, in fact. So, now you may be wondering, well, if it's only erasing the reference, it must be possible to recover deleted files. This is true to a certain extent. If the computer has not overwritten sectors that it considers empty, then you will be able to recover the files. So if you accidentally delete a file, you can find, using Google perhaps, a program uh, or programs that are known as undelete programs. Uh, these will help you recover deleted files. However, if you have written data to your disk since the last time you deleted this file, uh, you're decreasing your chances of being able to recover it. 
So let's say now that you are going to sell your computer. You want to erase everything. Normally just doing a format on the computer isn't going to do much. All of that data is still there. It essentially does the same thing. It just clears the file allocation table, but the data still exists on your actual hard disk. So this is where we have to do something called wiping a disk. Now the tools that come with the Mac OS will actually help us do this. So if you open up your Macintosh HD, go to the applications, scroll way down, find the utilities folder, and go to disk utility. It shows a list of disks that you have connected to your computer at the time. So right now I have an external USB thumb drive that I want to erase completely before I sell it to my friend. So I can click on the drive. Now if you click on the Erase tab, you see that there are a couple of options near the bottom of the screen here. There's an Erase Free Space button. What this will do is allow you to just erase the free space on the hard drive. Or in the example of this here, you would erase the first three sectors and sector six, but not my song, Dead MP3. Now I have a couple of options from this Erase Free Space. We can zero out the deleted files, which means that it doesn't write random data, it just writes all zeros over the empty sectors. It can do a seven pass erase, which only means that it writes uh, junk data seven times, or it can do a 35 pass erase, which, is, which takes a lot longer, um, but is a bit more secure as well. So I won't actually do a zero out or a seven or 35 pass erase of the free space right now, because this actually takes a long time. A 35 pass erase of all of the free space on a hard disk or even on an external thumb drive can take a very, very long time. Uh, I'm talking order of hours or depending on the size of the disk, maybe even a few days. So keep this in mind when you uh, go ahead and erase the free space on your disk. Now there are other options. Let's say that I just wanted to erase the disk completely. Like I said before, I just want to get rid of everything before I sell it to my friend. Now there's an erase button, but this will only format the drive. Like I said, this will only erase the file allocation table and the data will still exist. So instead, let's go to the security options. So here we can see that the default is to not erase any data. Uh, this is not what we want in this case. The other three options are similar to the erase free space. We can write zeros over everything. We can do seven passes of junk data or we can do 35 passes of junk data. Now again, you have to weigh your options here. 35 pass erase of a very large disk will take a very long time. So in this case, this is a two gigabyte disk, so I think a seven pass erase will do. I click OK, and then I click Erase. Now it's going to ask me if I'm sure, because once I begin the erase of this particular thumb drive, that's it. I cannot recover the data from this thumb drive. I'll go ahead and click Erase. And now it says at the bottom here, it might be cut off, it's, it's saying secure erase, pass one of seven. This is taking a long, long time, I tell you. I'll tell you when it moves to the second pass. So moving on, there's also a tool for Windows called DBAN that will do a similar thing. So here I actually have hidden a uh, Google search for DBAN. It's called Derek's Boot and Nuke. So if you go to dban.sourceforge.net, as you can see here, you can download it and you'll be able to securely erase the data off of your hard drive on your Windows machine. The Department of Defense actually has specifications for what it considers secure file deletion. The 35 pass secure erase that I showed you a little bit earlier is one of their highest specifications for securely removing files from your hard drive. So let's take a look again at this er disk erase. Alright, well it just started past 2 of 7. So as you can see, this is going to take a little bit of time. Time that we don't have in this video of the week. I hope you'll join us for others though. My name is Dan Ormadaris. Thank you for watching.
So let's take a look again at this disk erase. All right, well, it just started past two of seven. It looks like it's going to take about 20 minutes for the remaining six passes. So we don't have that much time. I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, please do this. Oh, no. Oh, no, I can't say goodbye. I love you all too much.